Happy weekend, oil traders. It is August 20th. Uh, we're eight in the a.m., so well ahead of the Asian Open here um, prior to Monday's Open here on the East Coast. And I thought we'd take a look back at the week of August 14th to the 18th, which, as you can see from the chart here, it's one big U, one big dip. Uh, we're basically pretty much um, back to where we started the week. Um, kind of just below 49 is exactly where we were on uh, Monday. We made that first push past 49 to, to try to hold it and then collapsed. Um, and it's exactly where we're back to now. On Monday, we we'll, we're more than likely to make that push again um, through 49. And the question becomes whether or not we're going to be able to hold it. Uh, but I thought, you know, this past week was really a terrific example of the way I approach um, trading oil. Um, there's no, I mean, I'm not a expert in anything really related to crude or commodities. I do have a background in, in economics and finance, of course, but I wouldn't really say that that contributes much to how I trade oil. If maybe simply for the fact that I I know what not to worry about. Um, what I mean by that is if you study economics and finance you learn a lot of stuff about how things work and what the value of something should be based on its fundamentals. You look you, you do of course touch on technical analysis and this and that. Um, and it's all worthwhile to some extent um, of course but the financial markets in general, in my opinion, right now are dominated by traders, by whether they're uh, retail traders or whether it's computerized algorithms for high, that basically trade high frequency um, portfolios. And the result of that is you cannot rely on the fundamentals or even the technicals um, to tell you anything about what to expect. Um, so what I've kind of come to appreciate is kind of just look at what's happening, get a feel for what I call the personality of whatever it is that you want to trade, in this case crude oil, and, uh, and learn how to simply trade on the volatility. And this past week is a perfect example of that. Um, I started out the week holding a short at, uh, at about 48.20, um, which is, of course, that we, we broke through that and fell to um, approaching 47. Um, and uh, I sold that short, of course, not very greedily, but uh, I took it for 3.71% early in the week, I think that was uh, Tuesday. So if we look at my results, that was um, a relatively long hold, 19 days. Um, so it was purchased originally on July 26th and sold it on J August 14th, so that was the Monday. Um, if we then flip back to the chart here on, the next trade was the next day, so Tuesday. Uh, on Tuesday, basically, we dipped finally towards 47 and I had been targeting 47 as a point at which to buy my uh, long position or to add to my long positions. Um, we didn't quite make it to 47, but I felt that it was close enough when we hit 47.10, so I simply bought it. If we had fallen further, no big deal. Um, at that point, I was prepared to hold that 47, 47.10 long for how for however long it took for it to become profitable because, I mean, we're going to see $50 oil again at some point. Um, I don't know if it's going to be next week, next month, or next year, but we're going to see it. So it's not really what I would consider a risky play. Uh, in any case, I bought that long uh, at 47.10, and of course, fortunately for me, we basically started going straight back up. Um, well, not straight back up, but basically climbing gradually up towards 48. Um, so I got rid of it. I, I took it for 2.3%, which is you can, you can see here on my tradingjournal.ca account, which I'm referencing right now, um, on, uh, on the same day. It was a five and a half hour hold. Um, you know, anytime you can take 400, almost $500 um, for, uh, for five hours of, you know, 
quote-unquote work, um, it's a good day. Um, and then basically, once I sold that, it was a matter of waiting, you know, are we going to go higher or are we going to go lower? I don't really have expectations. I mean, I have my personal opinion and, um, you know, what, for whatever that's worth. But basically, if we, if we were to have gone higher still past uh, above 48 at that point, I'd be looking to re-enter my short positions. If we had fallen again, I would be looking to repurchase that um, long position, um, which if you look at my my notes from that trade is exactly what I wrote. So if I flip over to, so if I flip over to the uh, the notes for that trade, um, it's exactly what I wrote here. Um, my intention to basically repurchase, whether the short or the long, depending on what it is that uh, Crude decided to do that particular day. Um, and it turned out that the next day, I believe, um, it was the 16th. Yeah. So the next day. Uh, that was the Wednesday, that was Newsday, um, we dropped. Um, so if you recall, the news is actually bullish. So we initially jumped up, um, almost touching 48, and then basically collapsed down below 47 for the first time in August. Um, and when we fell below 47, of course, the question is, you know, how much lower are we going to go? Um, but my target, as you know, was, you know, 47-ish is probably good enough for me. So when we initially fell towards um, 46.75, I said, you know, that's good enough for me and, and I bought it. Um, we did go um, farther and we went as low as um, 46.47, uh, I think. Um, but my, you know, my 46.75 was looking really, really good long term. Again, if I ended up having to hold that for a couple of months, no big deal. Um, we held along, um, we held around this level with nothing really to do for um, for about 48 hours, and then for some unknown reason, we just spiked on Friday, um, big time. It was uh, two and a half percent plus, uh, almost three percent, I think, um, from the lows to the highs. And um, having purchased that long position, I basically was looking for my exit. And with all the struggle that we had just above 47, I didn't want to be too greedy. So I actually had entered my sell, my sell order for that long um, at 47.30. I was just about to enter it where we climbed um, very quickly to 47.45. Uh, we held there for what I call a moment. <laughs> um, and I simply said, you know what, I'm just going to take it. Um, it, was, it was good enough. It was... Uh, what exactly? It was 2.9%, uh, I mean, almost 3%, 635 bucks. Um, you know, that's a healthy take for 48 hours. So I just took it. Um, of course, we just kept on going and going and going. Um, once we made it past 48, of course, then my new, my previous target for purchasing that short again um, became live. And anything above 48.20 was you know better than what I had at the start of the week so you know that was already looking great and as you can see here we basically um, hovered around this 48 4840 um, level for uh, for a couple of hours and I decided to purchase at 4845 um, of course we went higher still um, and closing the week out at 4870 but my uh, 48 excuse me I think it was 4835 4835. Um, if I flip over to my portfolio here and we take a look at, uh, where is it, here, uh, yeah, so 4835, um, I put that in my notes there. So 4835 um, was kind of right there, uh, so below that range. Uh, I probably acted a little bit too quickly. I should have maybe waited for it to settle a little bit more, and, but I mean, it's not a big deal uh, as far as the difference. My expectations are about these big moves, not these little breadcrumbs. Um, you kind of want to get the meat of the trade, meat of the move, I should say, rather than trying to profit from these tiny little swings. Because I've tried that before, and um, yes, you can win on them if you're playing big enough portfolio, big enough uh, positions. But uh, I mean, there is really, anyway, you do what you want to do. Um, I find that I'm a lot more comfortable now trading uh, with kind of wider spreads between my my positions. 
and waiting for bigger moves rather than trying to take half a percent here and one percent here. Um, taking two and four percent um, is simply more comfortable, less stressful, um, fewer trades, fewer commissions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but as you can see, basically, I started out the week holding a short at 48.20. I managed to take profits three times um, for 545, 480, 635, and ended up the week um, better off than where I started because now I'm holding the short instead of at 48.20, I'm holding it at 48.35. Um, but I've got profits in the bank. Um, you know, does this make me a good trader? No. I mean, all I did was buy the dips and sell the bounces, um, which is what I wrote here. There's no mess. There's no mystery to it. There's no magic to it. It's simply when I look at the the long term chart here. This is the one month chart for crude. You can see basically we just bounce around, bounce around, bounce around. If I zoom out to three months, you can see here even even more so. Depending on what your time horizon is, we just bounce. Um, from the lows of lower 40s to the highs of um, low 50s. Um, we're just kind of going up and down, up and down. Um, are we going to see the low 40s again? Yeah, probably. Are we going to see the low 50s again? I, I would bet on it. I am betting on it. Um, but you need to be patient in order to make it work. Um, sometimes you'll take a profit within a couple of hours and sometimes you'll wait a couple of weeks. But if you have that patience, um, the, the returns are remarkable uh, in comparison to the alternatives. If you look at my performance uh, long term, you know, it's, you know, this is, uh, August has been relatively slow. Last month was slow-ish as well. But if you look at the performance since I started this approach um, back in February, it's basically only had one direction, which is up. Um, and if you look at my average returns on a monthly basis, it's four and a quarter percent. That's per month, per month. On an annualized basis, you're talking about almost 68% return. Um, and it's not because I know something that other people don't know. It's simply that I'm trading on the volatility. Uh, you know, I... I'm not betting more, I'm not trading with more than I feel comfortable. I'm playing it relatively safe as far as what, you know, as what I consider safe. Um, I've got um, the time horizon to wait out whatever it is I need to wait out. Um, like for example, my long position is uh, at 52 and it might be many more months. It could be, you know, next year where I finally get out of that long position with a profit or it might be next week. Um, by the same token, I've got a short at 44, which looked really good buying that short here when we had seen you know, 42 uh, a few days before that. Um, now, of course, it's looking like I might be waiting months to get out of that short position. Um, but I'm not concerned because overall, I'm taking profits along the way. Um, so even though my portfolio, for example, if we take a look at this, I've got this unrealized loss sitting here because of my shorts and because of my longs, the reality of it is that along the way, I'm taking all these profits. So for example, performance since inception, I've collected in 51 grand in profit. So yes, I'm sitting on a 12 grand loss, if I were to sell right now all my unrealized positions at a loss, but I'm still ridiculously way up in comparison to any other investment I could have made. Um, and again, it's not based on me knowing anything. It's simply me looking at the volatility and recognizing the fact that you can wait out the bumps and lumps and simply cash in whenever the opportunity presents itself. Anyway, I'm going to stop there, and uh, but I thought it was this past week was simply a really great example of, you know, how I decided to trade crude. Um, there's no mystery to it. There's no magic. Yes, I've got a background in in economics and finance, but as you can see, this really doesn't factor into it, other than being able to have the confidence to say that my 
economics and finance education really doesn't factor into it. If you don't have that education, it's more difficult to say that it doesn't matter, but I can tell you at this point, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys think of my approach or what your approach is. You can hit me up down below in the comments on YouTube or uh, check me out on tradingjournal.ca where you can find more information on my portfolio, trades, results, performance, etc. Um, subscribe to stay tuned, give me a thumbs up on the videos and I'll check back with you guys uh, ahead of trading on Monday morning uh, prior to or around 9.30 a.m. here on the East Coast. Until then, enjoy your Sunday and check you guys on Monday. Cheers.